In today's vulnerability deep dive, we will explore a remote code execution that was recently discovered by one of our Synac Red Team researchers during a web application penetration test. Although these can be challenging to discover during a black box pen test where source code is not available to the researcher, this example is actually quite easy to exploit, which I'll be demonstrating in a few moments. Let's take a look at the four steps involved. Firstly, note that this exploit requires a user to have signed into the application. A user creates a new project. Once the project is created, the user has the ability to upload a file. The file upload function in the application is where this vulnerability lies, more specifically, in the file name. After setting a payload in the file name, the user would initiate a build, and then the payload will be executed and the attacker can see the DNS query containing the output from the command they instructed the server to execute when creating the payload. This exploit happens to make use of a common technique in proven code execution, using a DNS query as a means to see your command output. This technique is useful in a lot of situations where an attacker cannot see the output of commands being executed or if the system being exploited has restricted communications to the internet. Even in cases where traffic is restricted, DNS is commonly allowed. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to explain the setup that you are about to see during the demo. On the right side of the desktop, you will see a standard Firefox web browser. On the top left, you will see the Burp Tools proxy intercept window capturing web traffic being sent from Firefox before it gets passed to the vulnerable web application. On the bottom left, you will see a terminal window. This window is displaying a TCP dump command being run on a separate server than where the attacker is logged into the vulnerable web application. The server that it's displaying the traffic from has the ability to receive traffic from specific ports that are open on the internet, while the attacker's machine running Firefox cannot receive any data directly from the internet unless it initiates a connection. In the terminal window, TCP dump is running and set to only show DNS traffic directed to it. The first step is to create a new project. Next, turn the intercepting proxy on and capture the file upload HTTP request. Then, enter the payload in place of the file name. Forward the request to the server. With the upload complete, now we can hit Build. Note that the terminal window will now show the DNS queries and the subdomain contains the output of the command that was built into the payload. We then delete the original test project to repeat the process again with a new payload. This payload now contains the command Who am I? After intercepting the file upload request, change the file name to the new payload and then forward the request to the server. After hitting build, the output of the payload is now the subdomain in the most recent DNS requests in the terminal window. An attacker with authenticated access to the vulnerable web application who discovers this vulnerability will have user-privileged command execution on the server which hosts the site. The criticality of this vulnerability is highly dependent on the sensitivity of the data in the application. Even if an attacker is unable to gain administrative privileges on the server, user-level access often provides enough for the attacker where they can access the full database in use by the application. After gaining remote access to a web server, an attacker could study configuration files and discover how the app makes requests to the database and then replicate that behavior. From a defender's perspective, the attacker's queries would look normal because this application is supposed to make requests to this database. Additionally, this could provide an attacker with a pivot point into other parts of a customer's network. This depends on where the server is hosted and how well the security was set up in the particular network segment where the host resides. Another less common possibility is that multiple web applications are virtually hosted on the same server. If this is the case, a compromise of one web application could give an attacker access to other applications running on the same server, sometimes not even belonging to the same business. This depends on the configuration of the shared server. Security teams and developers should stay vigilant while creating features that act on user-supplied input. Limit the attack surface on your applications by only acting on untrusted input when absolutely necessary. Assume that every input an application receives from an outside source is untrustworthy and design your features accordingly. <laughs>